嗯、大家好，欢迎来到舒允堂 C Lingo， 跟大家说一下为什么我是录啊、呃、真爱录像啊、呃。首先是在啊、呃、很多不同的媒体平台上，他们都有很多啊、呃、卡通类型的啊、呃、儿歌节目。嗯、呃，但是我觉得啊、呃、有的时候嗯、呃、卡通不是不好，但是我觉得它对啊。呃年纪比较小的孩子的，嗯 ，simulation 或者是叫做刺激吧，我觉得是太多视觉上的刺激太多了，然后所以我就希望能化繁为简，然后嗯，以这么最最简单直接的方法去呃给小朋友唱儿歌，这也是我们平时自己作为。啊、呃，父亲或者母亲作为家长啊、呃，给孩子唱儿歌的方法，所以说啊、呃，我希望大家会喜欢。Why is it that you can't preserve a language by speaking to you and I, to the adults? Well, it's got to do with your brain. What we see here is that language has a critical period for learning. The way to read this slide is to look at your age on the horizontal axis. <laughs> So the question arises: When do those citizens of the world turn into the language-bound listeners that we are? And the answer: Before their first birthdays. What you see here is performance on that head turn task for babies tested in Tokyo and in the United States here in Seattle, as they listen to Ra and La. Sounds important to English, but not to Japanese. So at six to eight months, the babies are totally equivalent. Two months later, something incredible occurs. So what we're seeing here is changing our models of what the critical period is about. We're arguing from a mathematical standpoint that the learning of language material may slow down when our distributions stabilize. It's raising lots of questions about bilingual people. Bilinguals must keep two sets of statistics in mind at once and flip between them, one after the other, depending on who they're speaking to. So we asked ourselves, can the babies take statistics on a brand new language? And we tested this by exposing American babies who'd never heard a second language to Mandarin for the first time during the critical period. We knew that when monolinguals were tested in Taipei and Seattle on the Mandarin sounds, they showed the same pattern. Six to eight months, they're totally equivalent. Two months later, something incredible happens. But the Taiwanese babies are getting better, not the American babies. What we did was expose American babies during this period to Mandarin. It was like having Mandarin relatives come and visit for a month and move into your house and talk to the babies for 12 sessions. Here's what it looked like in the laboratory. So what have we done to their little brains? <laughs> we we had to run a control group to make sure that just coming into the laboratory didn't improve your Mandarin skills. So a group of babies came in and listened to English, and we can see from the graph that exposure to English didn't improve their Mandarin. But look what happened to the babies exposed to Mandarin for 12 sessions. They were as good as the babies in Taiwan who'd been listening for 10 and a half months. But we wondered what role the human being played in this.、Um, Learning exercise. So we ran another group of babies in which the kids were get the same dosage, the same 12 sessions, but over a television set, and another group of babies who had just audio exposure and looked at a teddy bear on the screen. What did we do to their brains? What you see here is the audio result, no learning whatsoever, and the video result. No learning whatsoever. It takes a human being for babies to take their statistics. The social brain is controlling when the babies are taking their statistics.